Yeah. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, welcome to the school's events. Uh, so we have Mr. Tarun Chaubista with us, who is going to uh, tell us about the joy of learning at early childhood. Just a brief about the uh, speaker today. Tarun is a social entrepreneur and has co-founded a company called as Seed to Sapling Education. Uh, Tarun has completed his MTech from uh, Indian Institute of Technology, Guwahati, and PhD from Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. He taught, he has taught for one year in Kalinga Institute of uh, Technology, Burneshwar. Uh, he has, uh, since last three years, he has been associated with the S2S. He's a recipient of Mission 10X Dale Carnegie certification for high impact teaching skills and a mentor for change uh, at Atal Tinkering Labs. He has coordinated a uh, mentoring program for gifted education project by NIAS and also mentoring at a mentee. He is very passionate about improving the life quality of people by education, awareness, and networking. So this is a brief about ENF. Sorry, this is a brief about Tarun. So here we have Tarun who can uh, help us in getting to know what is the joy that we can get in the early childhood. So over to you, uh, Tarun. Uh, please go ahead. Thank you, uh, Mr. Srinivas, for giving us this opportunity to share our thoughts about this particular topic and we are really excited to be here. And uh, I have Minal here, Minal Shah. So she is also from S2S and uh, she has done PhD from NUS, National University of Singapore. And she will be co-facilitating the session. So thanks Minal for that. And uh, welcome uh, all the participants. Uh, it's very exciting to see all of you here. And uh, we would like to have this session interactive. So whenever we are having any question, please feel free to express your opinion, thoughts, and there is no judgment here. Okay, so uh, all of you have the right to be wrong. So don't think that uh, whether my answer is right or wrong, don't worry about it. Whatever comes to your mind, you just share. So that is the idea. So with that, uh, let's move forward. So uh, if you have attended by chance the last session about from the schools, uh, that session was mainly about the three skills, right? So uh, I'm also take, taking three skills here. So cognitive skills, language skills, and motor skills. Definitely there are more than these skills, but let's take these three and you can also think more. But now the question is that how can we develop these skills, right? So that is a question which, which we are going to start. So for all the interaction, you can use chat. I am also looking at the chat. So uh, if you can respond to these questions, we know that we have to develop these skills, but how should we develop? What are the different ways to develop? What are the different approaches to develop? So if you can write down in the chat, that would be great. So Jenny is here, Steven Sutte is here, great. Language skills, uh, communicating with kids more often, very nice. Uh, that's what Srinivas is saying, that's great. Jenny is saying cognitive by playing and craft work. Very nice, very nice, Jenny. Ashwin is saying by providing opportunity, situation to use this skill. Very nice, Ashwin, great. Yeah, so these are the couple of things which we can do, right? So let's say what are the different approaches? So these are, couple of approaches, couple of ways we can think about developing these skills. And I will request Minal to let us know more about this approach. Right, uh, I can see a lot more people are replying in the chat box. Uh, so Kishan is saying by giving uh, uh, different tools. And so what we are all saying is giving opportunities to exercise these skills, right? So uh, all these skills are something which all of us desire for our children to inculcate uh, as adults. But uh, as most of you would be aware, the starting point, point of these skills start right from um, day one, the, right from early childhood. And uh, can we do something in that early age to make sure that these skills uh, are exercised uh, repeatedly so that uh, children can get better at it? And of course, there is no one way to go about it, but there are some um, uh, 
ways which we have uh, shortlisted here. For example, play. Uh, so play is uh, something which has been uh, very routinely used these days in early childhood. Uh, so we'll talk a lot more about play. Uh, but what play means is uh, just an open-ended um, exploration uh, where a child is provided to just play around with things. Um, some uh, projects or challenges, it could be really tiny, simple challenge, like uh, painting a cube with a, a same colored or making sure that all sides of the cubes are looking different. It could be any small, simple project. Uh, but uh, which involves, uh, there is some open-endedness to it, but at the same time, there is a target uh, that someone has to achieve, right? Uh, next, uh, very important, yeah, three is missing there. So, so three, uh, they have to think about what can it be. <laughs> right. So, uh, yeah, one very important uh, uh, way is to have conversations. And uh, conversations uh, where there is a continuous uh, to and fro happening uh, through question and answers where a child is asking a question and you follow up by asking a counter question or becoming partners in that uh, process and then figuring out um, the answer together through dialogues, right? Uh, again, next uh, very interesting uh, way is through stories and reading. So not just reading stories, but also co-creating stories together. Uh, either uh, let the children tell stories or uh, all of us can come together and uh, create stories. So children are in the habit of uh, creating stories all the time, but can we do something to give it a uh, some structure and so on? So yeah, let's, let's go into uh, some of them at least. Uh, so yeah, let's start with play. So yeah, as I said, play has been very routinely used, especially in the early childhood these days. So what are your thoughts? What is play-based learning or what is play? Uh, yeah, maybe you can all respond in the chat box. What do you all uh, uh, think about when someone says play? Yeah, Jenny is talking about motor skills, uh, yeah. so she is saying we can use uh, sand, water, kitchen vessels, very interesting, very nice. So kitchen is saying learning through physical activity. Right, Sapna is saying play is an exploration, right? Yes, uh, Ashwin is saying play is done for pleasure. Okay, any activity which is done for pleasure. Right, um, Tarun, can you go to the next? Yeah, so uh, one key uh, characteristic that uh, some of you are uh, pointing uh, out is uh, one is pleasure. If whoever is engaged in play should enjoy play, right? So uh, pleasure is the, the most important aspect of play. Uh, but uh, otherwise, to me, what uh, is most important is there is no... Um, uh, extrinsic goal. There is no uh, winning or losing in a play. Uh, so unlike games where there is a winning or losing uh, or there's, it's like a competition, play is just an exploration uh, where there is no uh, uh, structure of uh, someone who's going to lose in the end or win in the end. Right? So yeah, the, again, there are a few other uh, important uh, points that one should consider is uh, it's, it's pleasure giving activity, right? So it you can get most pleasure when it is directed by myself. So it's initiated. And a lot of times you would see children engaging in play. So they devise their own plays. Uh, for example, keep rolling down something over a slope. So uh, when, when someone is observing this uh, uh, from outside, it might seem like a repetitive, uh, even pointless activity, but it's play because the child is just enjoying doing it repeatedly uh, as a task with some flow to it, right? So, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, most importantly, play sometimes is confused with games. Play doesn't mean games. Uh, it could mean game, but uh, it is much more, there is much more to it than games. Right, uh, Tarun? Yeah, so I think uh, we are talking about the pleasure and uh, they will say, no, you are just talking about the pleasure, but we are not having pleasure. So I think we can play something and let's have pleasure, hopefully. So, Minalia. Yeah, you can go ahead. So uh, what we will do is that we will play a game. And uh, this is a game which we call question game. Okay. And uh, 
I am not keeping any rules for winning and losing here. So let's just play for the pleasure of playing. Okay. And uh, the game is, you have to ask a question. So ideally, when we are doing it with kids, let's say if four of us are there, then one person will ask a question, another person will ask another question, third person will ask the question, fourth person will ask the question, and first one will again ask the question. So it will go like a cycle, right? So one after another. Now, there can be different variants of it. One is that whatever question is asked, next person should ask the question which is building on that question or related to that question. So that can be one variant. Second variant is that there is no condition. Whatever question is asked, next person can ask any other question, right? Just for the sake of question, that's all. So there can be different variants of all these things. So today, because we are doing virtually and we can't go in this sequence, you just put down your question and if others can build on those questions, that's great. If you can't build on the question, if you want to ask any fresh question, that is also perfectly fine. So let's start playing now. I hope uh, instructions are clear. So I'm looking forward to your questions on the chat. Wow, first question has already come. Minal is saying, why is the sky blue? Okay, Sinema is saying, where did we get color blue from? So Sinema is building on Mina's question, that's great. How do you know that it is blue? Wow, Kishan is talking about that, that's great. Is the sky blue on other planets? Wow, Ashwin is talking about that question. I can call, can, uh, can I call a blue cab? Okay, interesting. What is the difference between blue and red? So now we are also doing a comparison, very nice. Now Via is asking, are all wells blue? Very nice. So that's interesting, right? So, so many things are coming. I was not hoping that we will have the variant of the first question, but so many variants are coming out. And we can see everyone is thinking from very different perspective, right? Do you have Monday blues? Okay, <laughs> interesting. Ashwin is saying, how will you explain color to a blind person? Wow. So he's thinking from the perspective of a particular set of community, a, a community. That's interesting. Is blue really blue? Wow. So we are now questioning the terminology, right? So we are questioning that. So that is also very important. When we are having a question, do we really question? So when Minal said, why is the sky blue? First question should be that, is the sky really blue? Right? So I am questioning Minal's question itself. Right? So that's very interesting. Very nice. Great. So we can see that we have played this game and so many variants have come. I hope that there was some pleasure at least. Uh, if you do it physically, obviously there will be much more fun because we can see each other and a uh, lot of interaction. But these are some uh, some of the questions which came from my son actually. So uh, I have a son who is four and a half year old and we were playing this question game with him. And uh, these are a couple of questions like, how do clothes dry? Why do trees move, right? Uh, Shinya is saying, why blue is spelled as B-L-U-E? Very interesting. Uh, so. Uh, so these are a couple of questions came from me. And last question is like, why does sometimes the sky look white and sometimes blue, right? So these are the questions he came up with when we were playing the question game. So I might have played this game with him three, four times. After that, I stopped playing, okay? I didn't play the game with him. One day, just out of uh, nowhere, he came to me and said, Papa, can we play that question game? I said, okay, fine. And then we started again playing and so many new questions came. So what is happening is that because of this gamification, right? Because of the gamification, there are many questions he is generating and he is developing his questioning skill, right? So whether the questions are good, bad, we can always debate on that. And I personally feel that there is no bad question. It depends mainly on the perspective. To us, these questions may look very simple, right? And we may think, okay, what is the big deal in that? But for a child, I think these are wonderful questions Right? And for some of these questions, we may also not know the correct answer. Right? So, so that is a wonderful thing which happens if we play a game like this. Right? Okay, great. So we have seen one aspect where we played a game. So we can do a gamification for anything. right? And it is not necessary always to gamify, but if we want, we can gamify. Right? 
now let's move to the second aspect which is about the play for discovery right so let's see what is there for that actually uh, jin piaget said very nicely that play is the answer to the question how does anything new come about how does anything new come about the answer for that question is play means if we play many new things will come right so that is what the jin piaget is trying to talk about and you can see here again so there is a geo board basically so geo board has uh, two sides uh, one side uh, you have a lot of pegs in a grid the second side is something like this and uh, again this is done by my son so i am taking examples from him because i have observed him more but i believe that every child has the similar kind of uh, exploration attitude right so so what he did that he has put that rubber band and i didn't tell him to do anything okay so this was just lying down in one corner because we use it for the elder kids it was just lying down in one corner he just picked it up and he connected the rubber band something like this and he was just playing with him playing with it and then uh, after maybe couple of seconds playing with it he came to me and said that see papa this is x here this is x and if i rotate it he might not have used this word rotate but he said if i do like this then see it becomes plus so we have a multiplication and we have plus right so again you see here just through the play he has figured out this thing right that if we rotate something the meaning of that thing may change right so so very interesting uh, aspect just playing okay just playing that's all again after some time again he started playing with it and then he just connected all these rubber bands in this way right uh, we can see there is a chaos right <laughs> let's just rubber bands in every, every other direction right but uh, let's see if we can uh, uh, write down some observation corresponding to this on the chat any observation corresponding to this jumbled rubber bands whatever you see on the screen you can write down in the chat lots of chefs uh, srinivas is talking about that very interesting yes exploring very nice we, if we can have more specific observation we can write down those observations also connecting the dots harish is talking about that very interesting quiz cross srinivas is talking about that jenny is saying all enclosed spaces wow wow what an observation jenny we can see that all of these are enclosed right very interesting it is started with a pattern it is a pattern in itself kiran is siddha is talking about that very nice kiran yeah so we can see so many patterns which are coming up some lines are parallel ashwin is talking about that so ashwin is also thinking from the mathematics point of view uh, so we can see we can again look at this from multiple point of view right we can think from the mathematical point of view we can think from other subject point of view we can think in general right very interesting so now again uh, after playing with it he came up with this observation that uh, see papa this rubber band which i didn't connect it here it looks more of like orangish right but all the other stressed rubber band are kind of pinkish right so very interesting observation again i never thought that uh, like if i would have looked at it i would not have come up with this observation and all these observations are become so he is like my guru now so i am using all these observations for my sessions <laughs> so you can see the power of play again right so okay so uh, minal yeah if you can also let us know a little bit more about what kind what different kind of plays can be there right so uh, tarun these were great examples uh, and there is no end to it we can be creative and do uh, many different kinds of play right so uh, as uh, so more than tarun i think you should say granth tarun son who has invented all these games so he used geo board as a exploratory object there could be any exploratory object right there's no end to it it could be a water bottle pen pencil a door handle toilet flush any uh, objects can be used as play so uh, i've seen kids playing with toilet flushes a lot and there's uh, a very interesting mechanics that happens in toilet flushes so uh, yeah that's also a great tool to uh, explore and play around um physical play of course uh, running a uh, different types of running jumping around uh, pretending uh, so this also brings in the aspect of uh, imagination because i can bring in my wishful thinking 
what if uh, i had the powers of spider man or what if i was uh, uh, a the wonder woman whatever so uh, any any uh, imaginary wishful things that i want say i was a spider man or i was a superhero what is it that i would want uh, what what would be my superpower and so many other things uh and again this there is no like uh, structure to it right uh, it can keep evolving as i uh, do conversations around say i am a superhero and someone else the second superhero and if we are doing conversations around it the powers of superheroes can keep evolving and so it's not just a, a learning ability for a learning moment for the child but it's also a learning moment for facilitators because there is a lot of things that you get to understand about the child through these uh, plays uh, what are the things that um, build uh, the child what are the things that are important for the child what can you do more to facilitate in a certain direction so it's a tool of formative assessment and not not really using assessment as a uh, a very strict uh, word of assessing something but just to understand the child better yeah constructions uh, so these days there are a lot of uh, uh, lego based uh, activities but that could be a part of it just using paper cups or uh, playing cards uh, there could be a lot of constructions done uh, so basically uh, again uh, interesting thing is multiple use of uh, the same thing right so playing cards need not be used just as playing cards but they can be used as uh, tools for many other things so yeah uh, play uh, fantasy or dramatic play so basically role playing uh, what if i was a chef uh, for a day and how would my day be if i was a chef so yeah um, or uh, so these are plays but there could also be gamification like we did in the question game uh, where there is a time uh, component involved and you have to quickly come up with many more variations of something um, and of course puzzles um right am i missing out on something or is there something else that you would like to add all of you uh, something that uh you would have tried and do you think that uh, could be considered as play yeah so those three dots you see after the puzzle those three dots are continuity basically so there is no end to this you can have your own way of playing so let's see <laughs> play can lead to business also definitely yes <laughs> universe definitely yeah while others are writing maybe uh, i would just like to add uh, when we are having this fantasy or dramatic play it can also be very imaginative right so it need not have to uh, be restricted to the real life thing it can be like i am going to a space uh, journey and what all will happen so there can be play corresponding to that also okay great so uh, then there can be language play so it depends what do we want to achieve so if you want to uh, achieve let's say if you want to develop the language skills there can be plays corresponding to language skills right there can be outdoor play there can be many other play ha uh, so ashwin is saying how is fantasy play different from pretend uh, i am not really very sure but according to me it seems like uh, pretend is more like uh, they are pretending a particular character which they see for example they see the Uh, father and mother and they will try to become father and mother and try to express themselves in the same way similarly teacher they will express themselves as a teacher so they they are pretending to be like a particular character but fantasy is beyond that so it can be anything it can be very imaginary which we have never seen they will say that i am a, uh, a space alien which has uh, this horn whatever right so in that way it can be different that's what i think but i am really not sure whether i am right or not okay great so with that uh, let's move to the third thing first thing was question game second thing we have seen that using the geo board uh, for playing and coming up with new things now let's go and play further so now uh, you see this disk uh, we call it clock face because there are numbers from 1 to 12 right now what you have to predict you have to predict that if i rotate it like this right then what will you observe right so what will you observe when you see it in the rotating fashion so if you can write down quickly on the chat 
Jenny is saying fantasy play could be a theater and drama. Yes. Again, uh, this difference is not that important. Uh, whether we should really call it fantasy or we should really call it uh, pretend, that difference is not that critical. Only thing is that we have to be aware of that. What are the different possibilities so that we can explore? That's all. Okay, slow, we can see numbers moving. Okay, interesting, Srinivas is talking about that. Uh, Srinivas, if it is faster, then what will happen? Marking will become blur, Ashwin is talking about that. Fast, it can be just the board. Okay, so you will not see anything at all. Okay, Jenny is saying a black circle, a gray circle. Okay, uh, probably I think Jenny is talking about this. This one will be a black circle and that one will be a gray circle. But yeah, Jenny, if I am wrong, you can add further to that. Uh, the dots moving, Harish is talking about that. Okay, interesting. Lines moving, Harish, okay. Yeah, so if you have enough time, we can explore all these possibilities, right? But we may not have enough time today. Uh, but that's very interesting that so many uh, predictions are coming up. Uh, let's see if you can see the... Uh, you need to enable the volume as well. In case you're yeah. Uh, shared sound. Is there a volume? Yes, yes. Yes, we have. I'll just play the first part again. Uh, because I yeah. So uh, this is a conversation which is going between my son and my wife. And uh, uh, yeah, I would love to know more about. Um, so I will come back to that video. What is the purpose of showing that video? Uh, but meanwhile, let's quickly see some observations. Okay, so I'm going to play this video where I'm rotating it. And let's see how does it look. Tarun, can you put it on full screen now? Yeah. I will play it one more time. Yeah, so there are circles, you can see at least two circles I can see. Uh, so I didn't play it in two motions, so we can't do that slow and fast here. But uh, numbers are blur or not visible, at least uh, that is what many of you said. But is there any other observation which you didn't predict, but it is there, if you want to quickly write in the chat. is saying you got to ask more questions. Okay. Yeah, Srinivas said fast uh, dots will be a circle or solid line. Yeah, so we can see that dots are becoming kind of circular. Minali is saying something seems to be moving in anti-clockwise direction. Okay, interesting. Let's see. S2S logo flies. <laughs> okay, interesting. Yeah, so we, can we see that? Like S2S logo, is visible to us, but the numbers are not visible. Okay, so let's play it one more time. So S2S logo is at least visible that there is something there, but numbers are not that visible, right? So we, if we compare these two things, that is a very different kind of observation. So I will not go into the detail why is it happening and all. Uh, we can uh, think about it, but uh, those are a couple of uh, observations, right? Black sign is seen three spots. Okay. I think probably Jenny is talking about this. No, I think she's talking about the logo. Okay. Huh. The logo is in three spots. Correct, correct. Okay. Yeah, so uh, let's uh, think about this third experience which we had about this clock press rotation, right? Now, 
we talked about the skills different areas for child development child growth and all these things can we quickly think about what are the different development areas which are involved in this activity what are the different areas different skills anything let's see what can be the responses uh srinivas is saying that observation skills are getting developed very interesting so one is that also think from the child's perspective uh like when i have shown the video of grant and my wife also try to recall that video and see if you can come up with some more uh, observations not in terms of the clock face but in general about the what was happening okay jenny is talking about visual is happening motor skills definitely yes uh, comprehension observation very nice amazement deepak is talking about that that's great yeah there is lot of wonder right sense of wonder what will happen oh it is happening like that wow that's interesting very nice vocabulary minal is talking about that interesting right so you if you see listen to the video my son was using one word pretend okay uh, no, not pretend so he was using this word prediction right predict okay and uh, if you would have asked me this question couple of years ago probably i also didn't know the meaning of that word okay so but he is using that word and it is not like i taught him this word right so it is not like i taught him this word he just picked that up because most of the times when i am discussing with my wife i will be using this word or she will be using this word we will be doing something we will say okay can you predict and uh, somehow i think he listened that and then now he started using it right so so that is what is happening okay so it is not like i am teaching him or we are teaching him but he is learning by observation by listening right so that is what is happening here so these are a uh, couple of things which as many of you mentioned uh, vinay is talking about the cogni uh, cognitive skills uday is talking about observation right very interesting so uh, yeah deepak is talking about magic right so we may think that okay how is is it possible right it looks like a magic that some are visible and some are not visible very nice deepak yeah so uh, language skills as jenny mentioned about uh, so he and he is learning these words by observation by listening right words probably not by observations but listening other things by observation and uh, questioning is happening and he is internalizing it right and now he is using the same thing with others so again you can see kind of role play here but it is happening actually okay it is not like just pretending but it is happening actually he has internalized it right it has become the part of him now right so motor skill because he has to balance it it is very difficult to balance that thing when it is rotating right and uh, social and emotional skills also is happening uh, obviously we can criticize the child is not talking nicely he is talking loudly or we can also say some good things about it uh, and i am not an expert on that so i will not talk more about social and emotional skill but definitely some social and emotional skills are also happening there okay so that is what was happening there so we have seen three aspects till now right we have a question game then we had this geo board and now we have this clock face thing and uh, so we we can see that what all the child will do when they start playing again this clock face also i didn't give him okay uh, so it was just lying down again and uh, i never thought that i will rotate it and see we use these things for mathematics okay so ashwin who is here he developed this thing uh, for mathematics okay uh i never thought that i will use it for science but once he had that observation i also had a thought and i shared the same thing with one of the teacher also uh, that this thing can be done and she was very happy that yeah this is very interesting observation so again just because of the play okay okay so i think we have talked a lot about play right now and we have seen what all the child can do now let's think from the parents perspective right what should we do as a parent right if you want to develop all these skills or anything we want to develop what should we do as a parent so if you can share on the chat so shinas is talking about let them play more definitely yes that we have seen the result of that uh vita is talking exposed to different activities very nice yes 
so one thing is that they are so there are different kind of plays also one is free play okay free play means they are doing whatever they want to do okay they can be guided play also where we provide them something collaborate with them play together all those things can also happen very nice learn while they play very nice right so it is not only for them it is also for us right because we are also observing what is happening right so we are also learning very nice uh, shrinivas talked about that jane is saying the same thing let them play as much as possible more play more learning kishan is talking about that playing with other children very nice point jane like playing with uh, parents playing with uh, other children because when they are playing with others lot of collateral learning is also happening right they learn from each other so many times he use words which i never told him okay i am kind of surprised that i never told him this word but how does he know and probably that he is learning because he is playing with his friends right so he is picking up from there yeah so interacting with others adults kids very nice observe their interest today is talking about that very nice today yes it is so when we are observing them we can also do lot of analysis what are they interested in what are they not interested in right and it is not like we are judging them so that we can provide them more opportunity as vita was saying right we can do that very nice children learn through gadgets yeah now which kind of gadget that is a question <laughs> should we give them mobile or not all these are debatable things we will not go into that but yeah definitely some objects as minal said for exploration yes main thing is parents should play with the kids very nice point jenny uh, i completely agree with you and uh, i think most of you already talked about all these things whatever i have listed down here so provide them an opportunity to play play with them as jenny is talking about be mindful as uh, i think uday was talking about uh, observe them listen to them that is the most important thing okay listen to them right so many times they want to express themselves so we just have to give a ear to them okay so listen to them what are they saying and you will be surprised that what kind of things they communicate okay many stories they will make many interesting things have fun with them use play as a learning opportunity one is that we just give, let them play second is that can we also introduce some learning component and is it important to always introduce may not be sometimes we can sometimes let them freely play so there can be different so there is no one fixed answer here there can be different uh, variants of this also provide opportunities to develop skills as ashwin was talking about initially role modeling that is the most important thing till now you would have seen right he is using those words because he has he has seen me using those words or seen me doing that thing this thing also i didn't tell him that uh, before doing anything we should predict so that is the principle which we use in science before doing any activity we have to predict that is what we do with the students probably he has seen me uh, with the students i am doing sometime probably i might have done with him also but i didn't tell him that okay uh, if you are asking someone you should first ask them that predict i didn't tell him that thing that he picked up right so because of the modeling so if they play outdoor games it will also increase their stamina completely agree okay great and we can also add our observation right so sometimes uh, they will say something and we can say oh i also observe this okay so they also see that we are also observing it is not like they are only doing it ask them to invent their own games very nice jenny yeah he keeps doing that okay he will not like the game i will design he will say i will design my own game and he will play with those games so here you can see the in the picture also there is a tent he made okay and uh, then he has put the pillow here this is a gate here all these things he has done it okay uh, obviously some help was done by my wife also uh, and uh, he had his uh, dinner also there he said no no i don't want to eat there i will eat in my tent and he slept there also so all these things right so uh, happened okay so uh, now we talked about what all can we do as a parent right but uh, it is also very important to understand that what can we avoid as a parent when they ask a question let's say right so any thoughts on that so it is very easy to tell what to do uh, it is slightly difficult to tell what not to do or what to avoid uh, while you are thinking about it i also wanted to mention one very important thing in the last slide Uh, you see i have added this line that i am trying to work on these aspects and most of the times i fail 
okay most of the times i fail like i think today i will play with him but something will come up okay and i will get busy and i will not play with him sometimes uh, i may also even get angry which we should not okay so all these things all these are very ideal things right that ideally we should do this thing but many of the times we will fail but that's okay at least we are trying right and we can be become better on those so we are also, these are also skills for parents right we are also developing those skills how to talk to the kids uh, how to communicate how not to communicate what to avoid so we are also learning with them so it is perfectly fine if we are not perfect only thing is that we should be aware of that right and i am not definitely a perfect person uh, not at least a perfect parent obviously not in any other role also okay so uh, questions are coming up uh, sorry uh, replies are coming up so let's see uh watchful not to get them hurt uh again there can be a debate on that i will not go into that uh so many times as a parent we are very protective right uh so we are very protective that uh, the child should not get hurt and uh, this is a debate which keep happening between my wife and me so uh, here at least it is slightly different uh, most of the times i have seen that uh, uh, mothers are more protective and fathers are little free in our case it is different so she is very free she will say okay fine doesn't matter he will get hurt that's that's fine obviously she care and uh, she has lot of affection for him but she doesn't want him to make very soft but i am very protective i will say that uh, no no don't do that okay so recently minal and we went for a trip in lalbagh and he was walking on a uh, one brick thing like there were bricks arranged as a line and he was walking walking on that and uh, i was little concerned that he may fall but again my wife my wife was okay fine let him do so so that is uh, definitely a uh, thing to debate about okay kishan is saying rather than avoid educate them in different way okay very interesting hmm. kishan do you want to tell orally what do you want to say about that yeah see uh, when you as such start avoiding them there is a question uh, within them asking why so when they say when they ask that why we may not be able to answer it so it's rather than uh, educating them uh, what is what might be the harmful effects of doing something like that uh, a different way of education so that they at least get to know that okay at this age or it is not for me so that is something which we'll have to convey them okay so probably you are talking about the bad habits kind of things so anything can be uh, ha uh, yeah correct so uh, yeah definitely uh, that can be one aspect but here more i am more i am talking more about when they are asking a question what can we avoid right so uh, all these are wonderful ideas whatever you have given so we are thinking more broadly that is perfectly fine and it is good actually but if we can also think about when they are asking a question what can we avoid right so definitely we should not avoid the question <laughs> that should not happen as kishan said uh, then they will not ask question or their uh, ability not ability but their sure. curiosity will die down right so that should not happen but what can we do if we don't want to avoid the question what can we do okay let's see other responses ashwin is saying that uh, we should give uh, a wrong but a convenient answer okay very interesting actually uh, ashwin very nice point so if you see in that video where i played the video of grant and my wife uh, <laughs> though probably my wife knew what was the answer but she intentionally has given a wrong answer or she just gave some observation some prediction right so it is not like we are always giving him correct things so many times i will also do this so he will say he will uh, let's say on the geo board he will put a rubber band like a square and he will come and ask me papa what is this i will say it is a triangle he will say no no it is not a triangle i will say it is a triangle okay then he will say how then i will ask him why it is not a triangle and all this conversation will start right so many times when we are giving a wrong thing or uh, something like this uh, many interesting conversation can happen very nice okay uh, rita is saying we should not watch tv or gadget while playing with children very nice so when we are uh, giving some time it should be a dedicated time so it should not be like multitasking that is very difficult we can avoid treating the questions of a child as unimportant jenny is saying very nice yeah every question is important give them a wrong but convenient answer ashwin talked about that never put a boundary to their imagination or oh, they is saying very nice we should be mentally and physically present with the child very nice yeah so our attention should be there we should not do the multitasking very nice okay so uh, all these are definitely very important and uh, we also want to add few things from our side so let's say when a child ask a question 
right? Uh, what can be avoided is that uh, in place of giving the answer, uh, so we uh, ideally we should not give the direct answer, and always it may not be possible. That is also there. But uh, what we can do is that let's say a child asks this question, why is the sky blue? In place of telling that it is because of this or because of that or because of this, what we can do is that we can ask them to reason and. Uh, again, there can be a question that can a four-year-old or five-year-old or two-year-old two child uh, reason out, right? So <clears throat> only thing is that we should be clear that we are not looking for the right answer, right? So if that clarity is there, we can definitely ask them to reason. They may say something which is not right, but they are at least thinking and that they can do it, okay? So I keep asking him some why question and he keep asking me some why question and then we will have the conversations and all so that reasoning capability is definitely there. May not be right reasons, but they can think. Okay, adding further further to their observations, like we can say that okay, uh, what else is blue, right? Or I have seen sometimes the sky is not blue. Or we can ask that is the sky always blue, right? So all these things can be there. So we are just having a conversation, and from that conversation probably we will figure out the answer. But at least we will lead somewhere, or at least those skills will get developed, right? So that all can be done. So the crux is that whenever they are asking a question, try to avoid giving the direct answer. Because if we are giving direct answer, we are not really helping them. Because they know that knowledge, right? But their knowledge may not be helpful. In place of that, if you can work on their skills, which is thinking skill, reasoning skill, questioning skill, then those skills can be useful throughout the life, any profession, any personal life, everywhere, right? So, so in place of working on the knowledge, we can also work on the skills. So that is the crux of this particular slide. Okay, so uh, so I have given you many examples of Grunt because as I said, I keep observing him and I have more opportunity to observe him. Uh, I don't, I can't observe so many other kids at least at this age, uh, not at this age means I can't observe the kids of that age because I don't have the access to them. Uh, but uh, uh, I'm just going to show you another quick video. And uh, this is a video of Panchi, okay, and uh, she is uh, the daughter of Pankaj, who is another co-founder of uh, S2S. And uh, let's see the video. करो ऑब्जर्वेशन क्या ऑब्जर्वेशन अभी आपका सो अगेन यू कैन सी लाइक शी इज टॉकिंग अबाउट ऑल दिस थिंग्स एंड आई एम श्योर पंकज हैज नॉट टॉट ऑल दिस थिंग्स अगेन व्हाट व्हाट एन ऑब्जर्वेशन ऑफ व्हाट पंकज डस करेक्ट सो बेसिकली चिल्ड्रन्स आर द रिफ्लेक्शन ऑफ देयर पेरेंट्स मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम्स राइट so we can see what the parents are doing most of the times in the children so uh, again very interesting uh, aspects she is talking about all these terminologies and i am sure that pankaj has not taught all those terminologies so what point i want to convey here is that uh, these are very common things across all children right so it is not about grant or panchi uh, we can see these things common across children only thing is that we have to provide them the opportunity and also uh, role modeling and most of the times we don't have to teach them right they learn a lot from observation okay they observe us and they will learn so modeling is very important okay so i will quickly uh, tell these things i will not take much time uh, but you can see here there is a, this magnetic board and these two pieces again i asked them can you make a square right so we can also give them puzzles right so one is that these are kind of guided play so then he made uh, uh square using those two then i asked can there can be also extension of the same puzzle so i asked with three can you make a square he made then with four can you make a square right so there are three four pieces one two three and four and he made the square and then i just went okay and he came back and said after maybe five minutes or so i was in the kitchen and he said papa papa i have something i said what is it 
he said come here and he came and show me this and again there are four pieces and he made a square and i didn't give this puzzle to him right that can you make a square using this four pieces he only figured out that puzzle he made a puzzle for himself that can i use some other pieces he might not have framed the question but he made this puzzle for himself and figure out the solution right similarly like he observed this thing again uh, cow dung and then there was this plant and he was wondering that where is this plant coming from okay so that was a question from him and uh, then he asked again and said where is it coming from we said as i said not give direct answer we said what do you think he said probably bird has cut from somewhere and put it here okay and then the conversation went on right so again we might not have figured out the right answer but during that process the process is more important than the final product right during that process he might have learned a lot right so so i think we are almost at the end uh, i think we have a uh, couple of experiences couple of anecdotes and uh, i think it is a good time to stop and reflect little bit that uh, what do you think about all these things whatever we discuss any reflection any thoughts uh, yeah please put it on the chat see considering the webinar itself till now was a joy of understanding so when it is done practically uh, i am just uh, looking how more joyous it would be and uh, unlike this would be done by the children for them uh, the more they explore the more they think out of the box uh, that is a joyous time for them uh, when for us only by seeing it is more <laughs> uh, joyous for them it would be much more i completely agree with you kishan like whenever we have this exposure with kids and when they came up come up with so many observation questions like that joy is the energy basically right so sure. that is the energy which is driving us so very very true Good. and nice. jenny is uh, saying something very interesting that uh, if you don't know the answer then you can say that i think uh, just saying i don't know is a very powerful uh, statement to make in front of a child uh, be it a teacher be it a, so even when teachers can say i don't know the answer for it we either we can figure out or either you can figure out uh, it gives the freedom for the child to say that okay there are things that uh, one can one doesn't know and that means there is so many things to be figured out yet Uh, so when i was in school i used to think that what everyone everything is understood my science textbook was telling me okay everything around us seems to be understood so what is there left to be understood but uh, yeah if we uh, give this impression that very few things are understood and uh, there is so much more that uh, still can be understood and whatever is understood it can still be revised uh, i think it um, is a, a great powerful thing to do so again there we have uh, another thing uh, at least for the elder students we will use something called two set of questions so we say them there are two set of questions so one set of questions are good questions for which we know the answer and then there is another set of questions which are very good questions and these are the questions for which we also don't know the answer okay and many of the times a student will ask a question and say sir ma'am is it a good question or a very good question because they also want to know whether we know the answer or not right so uh, jenny very very true completely agree shrinivas is saying that uh, we didn't know so much can be done via playing yes uh, like play is so powerful and we said play is just one way as minal mentioned earlier there are multiple other ways also to do it but today we just discuss play because we don't have enough time to discuss everything uh, but yeah power, play is so powerful let's listen from others uh, if you can write down on the chat uh, what can we do what should what can we avoid or any other reflection any takeaways from the session very nice so jenny is saying the webinar consolidates the fact that we did not spend much on typical and boring toys to make playing really pleasurable so i have shown you an example of uh, geo board uh, clock face and uh, magnetic board but these are there here for me because we use it but it is not really necessary to have all these things right we can also do a lot of play with uh, simple materials available at home like kitchen utensils right he came once to me and said that papa in the spoon this side if i keep the spoon like this it image looks something like this but if i invert like this then in image is also inverted right he is using kitchen utensils as an object now so very very true 
Okay, let's see if uh, others also have anything. We'll take maybe 30 seconds, last 30 seconds. If you have any other takeaways from the uh, session, please put down on the chat. Again, this reflection is also very important. So whenever we are doing uh, any observation or when we are playing with the kids, we should be very reflective, right? We should observe very carefully, listen very carefully and reflect about it. What is happening? Why is it happening, right? So sometimes I will see that uh, uh, he is doing something. I will start thinking, why is he doing in that way, right? Uh, whether it is good or bad, that is a different thing. But reflecting about that is very important. We should increase playtime in schools, yes. I think that uh, responsibility goes to Srinivas because he is dealing with so many schools. Uh, so <laughs> I will really request him to promote play. And many, many schools are already doing, at least uh, early childhood schools. Most of the schools use this play-based learning, and I'm really happy about it. Uh, but yeah, if you can also increase it to uh, elder classes, I think that would be great. One very effective example is letting the child use a weighing scale to learn about weighing volume. Wow, very interesting. Again, today only it happened, uh, uh, Jenny. Uh, again, uh, because we use weighing balance for uh, uh, our other sessions, and uh, it was just lying down there. And he was saying, he said, I want card. Then I said, okay, fine, take. He said, no, no, I want uh, 20.13 uh, gram of card. I said, okay. Then he brought the uh, weighing balance. He put a... Uh, let there and he said, okay, give me that much. So again, I didn't tell him to bring that, right? He is just observing us and then using it. Okay, great. So uh, before I hand over, uh, these are the takeaways from our side. Uh, Rita is saying children learn from home. A lot of things, parents should spend quality time with children. Uh, completely agree, Rita. Uh, I am also a culprit of that. Many times I am not able to spend that much of time, which I should. But uh, I completely agree with you, we should do that. Uh, Jenny is saying, and the non-digital scale is even more effective. Very true, very true. I played a lot with the non-digital scale when I was a child, I agree. Okay, great. <clears throat> so these are a couple of uh, takeaways from our side. I think most of you already mentioned uh, what we have covered, but uh, joy as a motivation. So many times we say that, uh, like, if you do this, I will give you a chocolate, or I will get you a bicycle, Right? So we are using this external motivation and that may not always be a good idea. In place of that, if we can use joy as a motivation for learning, that would be great. Right? Second aspect is uh, using joy uh, joy from play. Right? We can see there is a lot of joy from playing. Right? So can we use that as a, as a motivation tool? Right? So play-based learning, that is what another aspect is. And uh, finally, is that there is joy of discovery. Right? As Kishan was talking about, when they discover something, there's a lot of satisfaction, a lot of joy. Oh, I saw that. Okay. Again, today, uh, half an hour before, we were on the terrace, and there is a big uh, this container. He went and shouted inside the container, and the sound was loud. He came and told me, Papa, see, come, what is happening? I told what is happening. See, if I'm telling here, it is much more. Right? He may not have the words, but at least he is observing that, discovering that. So that is great. So all these things are important. Observation, questioning, prediction, solutions, right? And more than the product, the process is very important. And two things which I would really want to stress on, one is the modeling, as I said, role modeling. Uh, they will learn what they see. So we should uh, try to utilize that. Second thing is that also as a parent, we should be very careful about what is happening in the school and what is happening at the home, right? So let's say school is using play-based learning where they are not giving the direct answers. They are telling the students to figure out the answers and all these things. But as a parent, if we give the direct answers, right, then there is a problem. So there should be a matching between what is happening in the school and what is happening at the home, right? So that is very important. So please choose the school carefully. If you want, if you really want to use this play-based learning, then look for the schools which are using play-based learning. And most of the preschools actually are using play-based learning. So it is our responsibility as a parent to understand what is the philosophy of the school, what is the pedagogy they are using. And how can we support the school and, and the teachers? So that is very important as a parent from our side. Yeah, I think uh, that's all from our side. If you have any questions, we can discuss. And I'm really happy with the participation, a uh, lot of participation.
Yeah, if you have any question, you can put it on the chat. Uh, thanks, Rita, for the feedback. Uh, we really also enjoyed. Uh, thanks for participation. <laughs> Jenny is saying, looking forward to become a grandmother now. Great, Tarun. Uh, that was really nice. Uh, in fact, it was really a joyous session. Uh, and I could see that joy in you when you were as such uh, sharing all your thoughts. And I'm sure that uh, your son Grant is a chip of an old block. That is you. <laughs> I can see you with all the videos here. And uh, let this joyous moment and all the knowledge what we all have taken, let us see to that we'll transfer this to all our children at our four, in our four walls and also uh, spread it across all our known people. So with that, probably we should be able to end the session. Right. If uh, anyone has any questions, probably you can post it. If not, uh, we can probably uh, go ahead with closing the session. Thanks, Tarun and Brunal. Uh, that was really good. Brunal, uh, that was really very good supporting Tarun also in most of the things. Yes, and, I should also, also the... acknowledge Minal because a lot of yes. thought has gone through true. that and Minal has put a lot of thought for uh, what should go, what should not go. So thanks, Minal. Yes, and I also would like to uh, thank the panelists, uh, Srinivas and also Harish who helped us in all the technical things. Uh, it's been very instrumental of Harish uh, helping us in all the technical ways and making this webinar a wonderful uh, event. Thanks, Harish and uh, Srinivas and everyone here. Yeah, thanks thank a you. lot. And yeah. let's uh, look forward for the other webinars coming in. Please do uh, log in to the, the schools. In. Uh, this is uh, we are as such an online marketing platform to help all the parents in looking forward for the best school for their children and more events to come on our uh, page, please do log into schools.in. That's S-K-O-O-L-Z dot in. Thank you. Yes, Srinivas, I mean, sorry. Hey, uh, thanks everyone. Thanks for joining. Uh, thank you. I know, occasion. Thank you, Harish, for you know, setting this up. Hey, thank you, Tarun and Brinal. I think it was a fantastic session. And I loved it. I mean, I know, um, you know, first time I kind of figured out that okay, so much can be done while well, you know playing, right? You know, <laughs> no, awesome. I think we should carry this forward. You know, let's talk. You know, how best we can actually, you know, uh, get this rolled across to many other uh, parents and kids who are looking for it, right? You know, uh, we love to do that. You know, let's discuss it. And you know, let's you know uh, see if we can spread this message, you know, uh, across India. Right. Uh, let's take big. Uh, I'm yeah. looking forward for that. You know, uh, discussion, guys. You know, uh, let's make it make it something really concrete. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Thank also, you so much. Also, I you, have a suggestion for a school's platform. Maybe there can be another. So I can see there. It is visually very nice, and a lot of features can be seen very easily. So that is a perfect solution. I was just thinking, can there be another uh, uh, another section for the pedagogies they use? Obviously, these are just words. And uh, probably we may say that we are using play-based learning and we might not be using it really, but probably it may give additional information to the parents that what kind of philosophy school has, what kind of pedagogy they are using. So I think that would also be additional uh, aspect which they can see on the platform. No, absolutely, no, we'll, we'll do that. I think that's a good suggestion. We'll thank you, Tarun. We'll take the suggestion. Thank you. Great. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, thanks everyone. Thank you. Thanks, uh, thanks, everyone. Uh, yeah. A gift will be coming on your way <laughs> from school. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks. Have a nice weekend, everyone. Nice, nice weekend. Bye-bye.